Hello, family. Um, I had posted in the community tab that I was going to try to make this video to check in with you guys and to just kind of keep you in the loop of things so that you get an understanding plus you know how to pray okay it's hard for me um hard on my family what's going on so i'll give you an update and then i'll tell you what father's been teaching me during this So the update is, is th that we're waiting on the report back from the medical examiner concerning my child. <coughs> Pardon me. And hopefully that'll reveal something with this situation because as I have said my son was a domestic violence victim and that same morning or the night before maybe I'm not real certain on the timeline of that his wife had punched him in the kidney and causing him to urinate blood so when I spoke to law enforcement, I told them about that injury and to please contact the medical examiner to check for that injury because that will substantiate my claim of that abuse. And it's important because this abuse drove him to do what he did. And they're not, they're claiming in their investigation that they found no criminal activity from her. So therefore, his death was ruled a suicide. So, I'm trying to find ways to, within the confines of the law, to get this in front of a judge, even if it's for the case of wrongful death due to domestic violence which will open up another whole can of worms for her because she already is on probation for domestic violence. So I'm praying that Father will find in our favor for that if there's an injury that can be accounted for. Because when I spoke to the detective, I told him that if that injury is there, I demand that he deal with her. As of today, it's 22 days that my son is laying at that funeral home, his body. And to me, this is just her still continuing to inflict her abuse on him. He should have been laid to rest already, interred in some way. And because she's his legal next of kin, I can't really do anything. However, I've been talking to the funeral home and letting them know, and I've got our tribe involved. And so I'm going to see what comes of that on Monday. Because the funeral home agrees with me, because I told them the background on this as well. 
So that's that's the update on this. As far as where Father is leading me on this grief journey, you guys, you know, the only way I'm actually sitting here with any amount of sanity is because of Father giving me his strength and his grace. This is just a horrible thing to have to go through. But I trust him. No matter what, he's good. No matter what we go through, he's good. No matter what the enemy throws at us, he's good. And will get us through. No matter what it looks like. No matter what it sounds like. As for what I'm learning is that, you know, most mothers are protective like a grizzly bear over their children, even if they're an adult child, right? And so I've had issues that I've been contending with of my old nature trying to rise up and I have to put that down. Or if I vent, you know, fire and acid <laughs> from my mouth, I have to go repent to the Father. The main thing I'm learning right now is to overcome human emotion because if I get consumed with human emotion, that's the soul, mind, will, and emotions. And our soul will, will cause us to go into areas that we don't need to be. And it also doesn't exercise faith in the Father, and so that's along with his, his goodness and his grace that I'm learning different depths of. Trying to keep from being overcome with grief and overcome with, you know, wanting to take vengeance and all that kind of stuff. I'm, I'm learning from the Father to put that down. And stay within His guidelines on it. And because I'm a teacher of this warfare. And how to stand against the enemy. I have to learn certain things so that I can share them with you guys. And I say that because of the days to come, okay? We cannot react in our own human thinking or feelings when this war starts. Like when everything's coming at us, we have to overcome our own innate natural instincts on it and to do what through the Father, what we're supposed to do in that time. So it makes sense that this situation is teaching me. So that I can teach you. And I know that there's probably so many of you sitting there. Thinking well. How can you possibly be looking at that. In this manner. This has nothing to do with the war. <coughs> and 
I'll give you that. But Father will use any means necessary, whatever situation comes up, to make sure that we learn what we need to learn because he's just that good. And I know so many of you are, are weary, you're getting tired. And I prayed about that this morning. We need to pray for Father to pour himself out on us. You know, that great outpouring that's in Joel 2 and Acts 2. That last major outpouring of Father. So that's been my prayer. And also that Father protect you guys and those things, even if I'm not really active on here. And you guys are still in my thoughts because you guys matter. Every single one of you matter to me. You guys, I go through several times of a day where, oh, this anger in me just rises up. Over this whole situation, this shouldn't even have happened. It's, it's all the work of the adversary. But in order for me to stay in that Psalm 91 place or to even get at that place of Yeshua's feet, you know, like the woman with the issue of blood, you know, I've, I've just got a hold of the hem of his garment and I'm not letting go because I have to allow him to bring healing, to pour in oil and wine and mend my soul. Because this, this has been a traumatic thing. It's just, it's the hardest thing. But I can't allow grief to carry me away. That doesn't, if I get... I mean, yes, I'm in mourning. Don't don't think for a minute. And I have times where I just bawl my eyes out. Like night before last, I cried myself to sleep. I wish so much this wouldn't have happened to my baby, you guys. But there's nothing I can do. Nothing I can do about that. He's sleeping right now. He's sleeping. And so I just have to trust in the Father now and keep doing what I'm called to do in whatever capacity. I mean, He doesn't want me to get out and do any warfare or any teaching right now. He wants me to stay at his feet and heal. And that's what I'm doing. He wants me to stay at his feet and learn. And that's what I'm doing. I have to obey him. Because he knows what's good for us. We don't know. We're like little children. We don't know what's good for us and what isn't. But he does. This is such a heavy weight. But I have to lay it on his shoulders and let him carry it because it's too big and too heavy for me. And that's another thing I'm learning too is even a deeper level of just surrender and dependence on him. <coughs> Father will always 
take a situation and work it out for our good if we let him, if we get out of his way. And that's what I'm trying to do right now is just stay at his feet. You guys, I am just crushed to the point of being powdered. Laying at his feet, bleeding out. <laughs> the enemy would just want to sift me like wheat right now. That's another reason why I'm, I'm insisting within myself. Don't do anything. Stay plugged in to the Father. Because the cares of life can wait. Nothing is more important than doing that right now. He's all. Adonai Yeshua, our only hope in anything. So I encourage you all. And whatever is going on in life with you, to just grab a hold of the hem of his garment and hold on for dear life because the enemy is really at work right now with the whole body on the whole planet. He's trying to wear people out. He's trying to get people to let go and not trust in the Father. He's trying to get people to turn away from Father. And you guys, we got to be smart enough to not allow him to do that. So I encourage you to do what I said to do. It's the only thing that's helping me right now. And I'm sitting here and, and I'm not falling apart and I'm not caught up in emotion and all of that I have my moments I will I will confess that but for the most part he's keeping me held together pretty good and I've had another situation present itself there's a fight going on with DCS Department of Child Services with the baby of my son the one-year-old and so there's a fight going on with that now on top of this and we all know what that whole thing is about and what they actually do so that's another avenue that the adversary has come to try to give me a hard time and my family a hard time. Always trying to come and take advantage of us when we're down. You know, you guys, he's never, he's never going to stop. Never, ever. Not until Yeshua comes and puts him down. Puts him in chains and the angel locks him away. As it says in the book of Revelation. And then after that, he just destroys. He puts him in the lake of fire, which is a fitting place for him. So in the meantime, we hold fast. That's what I'm doing. And that's what I'm encouraging you guys to do as well, because there's no other way. <coughs> Pardon me, I'm still trying to get over that flu that I had. Um, just stand fast. Hold on to him. Hold on tight. Work on getting deeper in the scripture and, and prayer. Talking to him. 
sometimes just going to his feet and sitting down and be quiet. That's what I'm doing right now, and so I would imagine that it would work for you guys, too. We will finish the warfare course. I'm just not released to teach anything right now. He wants me out of speak so that I can heal and learn from him. You guys, don't give up on me right now. This is, please don't give up on me. This is a very intense time in life. And it's requiring so much from me, you guys. is so hard and so heavy and I still feel shell shocked I still I feel like I'm sitting in a big empty hole most of the time like part of my heart was ripped away in the passing of my son no matter how it occurred. Because I love my children. I, I adore my children and my grandchildren. Even the adult one that has turned against me right now. Want to cuss me out and everything. I still love her. She's still Nana's baby. <laughs> And that'll never change, contrary to what she might think. So I'm going to love her in spite of herself, no matter what. But Love is the only way to get through anything, because Father is love. And if we stay in that love, there's life. And that's also where I'm staying. I don't mean to just sit here and ramble. I just wanted to check in with you guys and tell you what's happening and what I'm learning. Because if you guys can glean anything that would help you and stabilize your walk, that's, that's what I'm hoping for. Just going to Yeshua in this helplessness realizing and learning that really none of us know anything or have capabilities at all within ourselves it's only through him and him through us the only thing that is in us that knows anything is the mind of Yeshua. That's it. So you guys pray. Pray for Father's justice to be done in this situation. And also pray for me to be able to, within the parameters of the laws, because I'm not legal next of kin for my son to be able to for father to make a way that I can put my son's body to rest 22 days laying there like that it's unacceptable but I just have to be patient which is hard but it's a requirement right I'll find something out tomorrow from the funeral home, I hope, to see if there's something that I can do for his sake.
get this part resolved. Because he deserves better dignity than what he's getting. So, anyway, that's all I wanted to say to you guys. And let you know that I love you. And I'm praying for you guys during this as well. Just don't ever give up. Hang on to him. He'll get us through. No matter what it is. Okay. So anyways, blessings be upon you and perfect peace. Shalom. And I'll be checking in soon. Okay, Abba willing. Alright, so that's it. Till next time, bye-bye.